Should the Spurs re-sign Romeo Langford? And what about the Thompson Twins? You are Locked On Spurs, your daily San Antonio Spurs podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Hey guys, this is Jason David Frank, the Green Ranger, and you are listening to a Locked On Spurs with Jeff Garcia. It's morphin' time. Welcome back to Locked On Spurs right here on the Locked On NBA Network. I'm your host, Jeff Garcia, Spurs writer for Ken's Five San Antonio. Glad to have you back. Hey, I'm feeling better. The last few shows, and I've been telling you guys I've been under the weather. Of course, the big Kawhi Leonard jersey debate, that's when I was at the worst. But I am feeling better, so hopefully I won't sound all congested and coughing in your ear. Hey, so what are we talking about today? We're going to be looking at uh, the Spurs free agents, and we're going to start off with Romeo Langford. Uh, one year under his belt in San Antonio, should he stay or should he go? And also, you hear about Wimby and Scoot and Brandon Miller. Well, guess what, Spurs fans? That's not guaranteed. There's a chance the Spurs could fall four to seven. And some of the names thrown out there are the Thompson twins, Amen and Asar. We're going to talk about those two guys and who would be the better fit in San Antonio. Once again, thanks for making Locked On Spurs your first listen each and every day. As always, we are free and available wherever you get this podcast. And don't forget to download the Game Time app. <laughs> Excuse me. Create an account and use code LOCKEDONNBA for $20 off your first purchase. Last minute tickets, lowest price guaranteed. Who is helping me today? Bring him back. He is my Ken's 5 TV colleague. He is Casey Vieira, who corrected me on the pronunciation of Amen Thompson. I thought it was Amen. Ah, Amen. Oh, it's a man. See, they're messing it up again. There, it's a man. Yeah. But it's, I'm yeah. not the only one who's saying that, right? Like, am I not hearing that right? I could swear when they're talking about draft lottery. Generally speaking, nine nine people out of ten they see that and they say amen. Yeah. So, I, I I don't think you are saying something that is overly egregious. All right. Well, I'm I'll man. be honest. I'll, I'll be I'll be entirely honest. Until our other colleague Tom Petrini gave us a master class. Yeah. In the in the two of these guys, and that's what I'm basing a lot of my knowledge today in advance. So, yeah, you know, you know, Tom likes to get the credit when it's due. I'll, I'll give him that right off the top here. <laughs> um, I I was not entirely knowledgeable about the correct yeah. pronunciation there as well. So, to bail you so out. So one more time, bit. it's it's amen, right? Amen, 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 amen. So so you have yeah. a soft a, that ah, like yeah. amen, like okay, uh, as opposed to a. <clears throat> I gotcha. Well, like, make amend. sure to f- like I'm trying like you're okay. trying to amend you're I'm trying to amend the mistakes of pronouncing it the wrong way. Bingo, there you go. Um yep. make sure to oh go ahead. Oh sorry. Oh no, that's all that's all I got. Oh, okay, okay. That's fine. Yeah. All right, thanks. <laughs> well, okay. Well, part of the open is making sure you get some love too. Make sure to follow Casey on social media, specifically Twitter at Casey underscore Vieira. So Casey, it's been a while since you've been on lockdown Spurs. Welcome back. But you, you, one thing that Popovich was talking about towards the end of the season, and he really ramped it up, was we're evaluating talent. Who's going to be here? Who's not going to be here? Well, part of that talent evaluation deals with their own free agents. And one guy that's on that list is Romeo Langford. First year in San Antonio. Kind of hard to really pinpoint whether he's going to stay or go or if the Spurs should resign him or not because this guy just couldn't stay healthy, couldn't he? No. He couldn't, and you feel bad about that because he had an opportunity or not had, you know, he he was getting, and and you saw it plentiful for a while of of seeing that time at the starting wing, the two, the three spot, and and if it wasn't for the injuries that collectively just snuck up and the team's curiosity of what they want to see out of Malachi Branham, get him more minutes, you are probably wondering if – this conversation, you know, the weight of it, you're putting a, a lot more weight into it, into the potential of him coming back. You could already see where I'm going with this. Right. But that's kind of the unfortunate break of things, right? You know, <laughs> it just yeah. goes your, it goes the wrong way when you have, and he was getting a better opportunity here than he was in Boston. That's for sure. And now as a result, especially given what they do have the team and being, largely pr- pretty pretty you know pretty plentiful of wings and in all likelihood going to be drafting another mm-hmm. i i don't know if this next season 
leads to Romeo Lankford on the team. Yeah, I'm I'm right there with you. I don't I would not be surprised if he's not re-signed, if he's wearing another uniform next year. Because you mentioned Malachi Brandon is a big reason. And also, too, you never know what's gonna happen with the draft. They get Scoot or even I mean through Miller or whoever, or one of the Thompson kids, you, you know, that really throws their things out uh for Langford. And for me too, it's just that old expression in sports. The best ability is availability. And he just exactly. wasn't available at all. Good defender. There was a uh, segment in the season last year where he was playing at peak performance. We saw him defend. We saw him score. You had Keldon Johnson come out and dare the media to look at Langford's high school uh, video clips and to prove uh, his point that Langford is the real deal, but that adductor strain that affected him kept him out of the uh, lineup, constantly right in the IR. But Casey, we shouldn't be surprised because this was him in Boston. Yeah, yeah, pretty much. Yeah, except this, in Boston, uh, except in Boston, when he was available, he didn't necessarily have the chances to really get back into the rotation and here at least for the start of the season he had the chances until malachi branham was given his chance and really took Mm -hmm. the ball and and ran with it Uh, but for whatever it it is it is worth i think he did have a a chance to audition more here and show the value you know that he can bring to a team for the Mm -hmm. you know for the sake of the betterment of him continuing his career someone else Somewhere else, you know, he did show that there are positive signs to work with, to stay in the league, to 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 be a part of an NBA team this time next. Well, I guess not this time. You know what I mean? You know, right. to to make a roster going into next season, and a big reason why is his ability to play defense, and he is relatively athletic. He is, and. That, that there are tools to work with that are there. And so while I don't necessarily think it'll be in San Antonio where he continues his career next year, I do think this year he showed enough mm-hmm. to at least make for whatever it probably is or is not worth to right. give me reason to believe that he'll be, on an, he'll be on an NBA roster by the time the season starts next year. Yeah, and I'm with you there too. Popovich also talked about uh, last season also being a stage for these players to continue their NBA career, whether in San Antonio or not. And that definitely gave Romeo Langford that opportunity. I just think of the log jam at the shooting guard spot, you know, because, you know, you, you mentioned uh, Malachi. I mean, there's, you know, who else plays that? I mean, there's possibility that Scoot could be here. So there's that. There's, you know, where the minute's going to be going for Blake Wesley. You know, what if he, you know, he makes a big leap and they don't want to stick him in Austin anymore. You know, there's there's so many things uh, that are just factoring against Langford staying in San Antonio. Not to say he didn't, you know, produce. It's just it was so rare and few between. And he did average career highs in points, 6.9 points per game, rebounds, 2.7, assists, 1.2, uh, career high in steals, 24 total. So, you know, and put up 13 blocks in 43 games played. He started 21 games as well. It's just. God, he just can't stay healthy. And whether that just means that he needs a serious summer a summer right now to get himself 100% headed into San Antonio or elsewhere's training camp. And also, too, Casey, you know, I know the Spurs got a lot of cash. You know, they can definitely give him a little bump and pay, but I just feel the Spurs could do better with that money elsewhere than Langford. Yeah, I mean, he's not going to cost you a whole lot, to be fair. It's not, you're not mm-hmm. going to be shelling out a whole lot of money to keep him around. But I think at the end of the day, what it comes down to is the current roster construction of yeah. what they have, where they want to invest that. And, and I mean, if we're being honest, he was a throw in money match in the start sure. in the Derek white in the Derek white deal. Mm-hmm. It was kind of one of those, take a flyer, see if you get anything notable out of it. And well, I did get a little bit notable, I'd say, sustainability of it on the roster long-term pro- probable, obviously from our conversation mm-hmm. that we're having, not a long-term thing that's going to be here. And I think it played out kind of the way a lot of people are going to play out. I should say the mm-hmm. lot of, the way a lot of people expected it. 
Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I, I'm right there. I think this is a very short and sweet segment here because, yeah, I, I just don't th- I think, and I do agree with you, he will be in San Antonio next season. And just Malachi Brandon, was just a big, just him alone, just really showed out and what he's av- he's capable of doing. The biggest thing, he's just healthy. Granted, he's a kid and you know different body types, and I get the, all that, but this is not something new for Romeo. He's been dealing with this since the 1920 season in Boston. So uh, I think the Spurs probably best to hedge their bets, let Romeo Langford go. When we get back, uh, we're going to shift gears to talk about the upcoming NBA draft. And you hear all the big names, Wimby and Scoot and Brandon Miller. But what about the other players that could land on San Antonio's draft board? Should they pick three or below to seven? Hopefully that doesn't happen. Right here on Locked On Spurs with Casey Vieira of Kent's 5 San Antonio. Hey, before we continue our chat Right here on Locked On Spurs, I want to talk to you about the Ultimate GM. You got to get the Ultimate GM game right now. All the uh, Locked On NBA guys are playing it. You should play it, too. It's the coolest game around, and it's it's one of the cooler games that i played in a long time. I've always thought I could be a great NBA GM. As it turns out, it's not that easy. If you have some thoughts or ever just, you know, thought about just managing your own basketball franchise, go download the Ultimate Pro Basketball GM right now. The game allows you to manage every aspect of the franchise. You can play through seasons, lead your franchise to glory, lead the fans to glory, just build a dynasty. In the simulation, you're going to be responsible for for hiring the right coaches and assistants, trading and training players, making draft picks, navigating your franchise through free agency and the draft, all the ups and downs uh, of a, well, just a season. Kind of like what the Spurs are doing right now. Yeah, you can get on that rebuild program on ultimate pro gm right now hey locked on spurs let's get themselves 100 percent free boost to the franchise when using promo code locked on in the game store so make sure to go check it out today download the game at probasketballgm.com scan the code and look it up on the app store that's probasketballgm.com ultimate basketball gm start your fantasy today and i also want to talk about ibotta grocery school supplies Getting a little something for yourself. You already know what you're doing, right? But, you know, shopping, but you want to get some cash back for it. That's where you got to try Ibotta. Uh, watch your closet grow after purchasing a lot of seasons, uh, last season's latest trends. If you did that, well, you know, you can also watch your cash back grow with each purchase. Again, with Ibotta. You earn cash back on every shopping trip. Ibotta gives you cash back on hundreds of grocery items from produce to personal care to pantry goods. Either link your loyalty account or upload your receipt after you shop to get your cash back. It's super simple. On average, Ibotta users earn about 120 bucks a year in real cash back. That can cover the cost of an entire shipping, uh, well, shopping trip, excuse me. Or you can use your cash back to buy that flight you've been eyeing, well, maybe that game you're dying to go to or that fancy dinner you always have been craving. Typical groceries was way over $50 more expensive at the end of 2022 than the beginning of the year due to inflation. You could earn two and a half times that in cash back from Ibotta or even more depending on how much you use Ibotta. Ibotta gives you real cash back, no points. Other apps give you points that don't amount to much. Ibotta gets you real cash back. You can cash out to your bank account, PayPal, or gift cards. Earn cash back right now on hundreds of online brands and retailers when you start with Ibotta, like Lowe's, Macy's, Sephora, Best Buy, and more. Ibotta is offering our listeners five bucks just for trying it by using code LOCKED when you register. Just go to the App Store or Google Play Store and download the free Ibotta app. Use code LOCKED. That's I B O T T A in the Google app or app store and use code lock. Let's bring him back. He is Casey Vieira with uh, Ken's five TV. He's on the sports desk side. Follow him on Twitter at Casey underscore Vieira. You know, Casey, I thought I could really get over this cold and I'm right there, but man, it pops up at the worst times. You ever notice that? Like you think you're in the clear when you're getting a cold and you're like, Oh, you know what? I think I can go and run that errand or, do that thing, and then it comes back says, now nah, you're not ready yet. And that's sort of what it's doing to you, I guess? Oh, yeah. I am focusing like a you-know-what right now, just trying <laughs> to get through this right now. But we're talking about your silver and black, and we're going to shift gears now to the NBA draft. Now, Casey, we get it. The dream, Wimby Scooter, Brandon Miller, 
sure, Wimby's the big prize, but hey, Scooter or Brandon Miller, not bad. But there's a, absolutely a, a bigger chance that that's not going to happen because, you know, the Spurs only have a 14% chance of winning it all. That means an 86% chance of not doing that. That means they may have to look elsewhere in the draft. Now, a couple of names that are high on the draft board are the Thompson uh, twins. No, not the 80s group that I grew up with. Casey didn't grow up with them, but I did. No, that was uh, before yeah, yeah. wasn't around. Yeah, way before him, yeah. But uh, Amen Thompson and Asar Thompson. Let's start with Asar. Now, first glance, you know, he, they're out of the, the – well, the, both are out of the G League Ignite program. So there they were able to get – G League ish level of play, but they also got to mix it with NBA veterans. It's just a jump for those uh, players that don't want to go to the G League route or overseas. They can bypass that via the Ignite. Uh, good experience, but why do I feel like it's just not enough? Like you could find like an NBA level, like I'm sorry, the NCAA level, like we saw with Brandon Miller, or professionally, at least in the Euro League with Wemby. Because that's probably accurate as to what you're saying. Okay. At, at least from the the standpoint of being entirely sold like that. That's I think collectively a lot of people probably feel the same way as you. I think that's why. Yeah. Now, um, if we're looking at some of the uh, stats and strengths and the weaknesses of Osar, one of the biggest strengths are that he has are assists, steals, blocks, and rebounds. Guy can play defense. Spurs sorely missed that last season. He could be a plug and play, at least for defensive purposes, right off the bat, Casey. I think with a lot of that too, you you know, you take him and what might make him the better fit of the two is the fact that all of those things are, like you said, needed. And it sounds like based off these kids, they have raw enough athletic ability and talent to right. sculpt things a little bit later. And I feel like it's easier to instill, it, it's easier to, or I guess more convenient with a rookie 19, 20 year old kid to instill offense into a defensive player as opposed to defense mm -hmm. and if that makes sense yeah defense it, it does more, it does or yeah. offensive heavy player i think it yeah. depends on the i think it depends probably on the position and i think you're probably a little bit more forgiving at that when you have mm -hmm. like that two three wing that's what he is and uh or what the two of them are and you can you know at minimum with that usually turn that at worst case scenario into an effective three and D type of player, worst mm -hmm. case scenario. But on the surface, it sounds like you know Asar is the more has the skill set that's the more immediate fix for right. the Spurs right. because yeah, I mean it was turnstile half the time last it, year it, watching it, the game play. Like it really was. <clears throat> Other strengths that he has: points, two point uh, field goal percentage assist turnover ratio, and just overall field goal percentage. Now, his numbers with overtime elite, 16 games played. He averaged about 28 minutes per game, 16 points per game, 67% shooting from the free throw line. That's definitely got to get better. 48% uh, overall, 30% from the three line. Another weakness right there. 6.1 assists, uh, 2.7 steals, 6.9 rebounds. And a relatively clean game, 1.9 fouls per game. Now, some of the weaknesses get into that, uh, turnovers, high, high, high turnovers, uh, 2.7, nearly 3 at the overtime elite level. We mentioned the free throw percentage is low and the three-point percentage are low. You're looking at turnovers and three-point percentage, that hurts them because it's a three-point heavy uh, NBA era and turnovers lead to fast break, that up and down uh, speed the NBA likes to play another detriment, but I think that can be fixed in the San Antonio system. Why not? Right. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Why not? I, I, I like the kid. I think just based on this, by the way, he's just 20 years old. So the Spurs get young, stay younger. Um, six, seven, 207 pounds. Yeah. For me, we'll get in definitely to a, a man in a while. It's the defense. I like the defense, and I think this Spurs team really needs to address it. 
I right now, before I give my ultimate pick, I'm going to lean towards Asar simply because of the defense and they need that. Hey, defense generates offense. And even if he can't generate the offense, he can pass out to a Keldon, to a Devin, to a Sohan, whoever, Zach Collins, they'll get it done. I like the defense. That's why I give him a slight edge right now. I will say this, though, to play devil's advocate, and I think, in my opinion, this is something valid. Do you feel like that type of player, though, is a little too redundant to Sohan? That's yes and no. Yes, that's yes, the only yes. Reservation. Yeah. yeah, that's the only reservation yeah. I have is yeah. that you're looking to someone who's a little too redundant to Sohan and I guess to a lesser degree the cell. Yes, but again, in today's NBA, that whole interchangeable, you know, positionless basketball, you know, he plays, he's listed at the shooting guard and the small forward. I know exactly that's, that's uh, the cell. That's so I held to a certain degree. That's even Kelton. Um, but I think if their Spurs are drafting and he's on the board, they have to really seriously take him because, I mean, if you can just switch out a player like that, let's say uh, Vassell needs to take a breather and plug in a kid like that, I think you don't lose a beat. Granted, and the learning curve will have to get better. The NBA learning curve, that is. But, yeah, I just – and it goes for both of them too, because both played at the overtime elite level. We never get to see them in in, in a upper, you know, league, if you will, NCAA tournament, NCAA uh, competition, or a Euro league overseas professional uh, setting for Wimby. And same thing that goes with Scoot, but he's not, you know, on on the topic today. But yeah, it's that defense I like, and not to knock De- Devin and Sohan. Keldon, I think that's for a whole other show there, Casey. But yeah, it, I think that's the only, that's another reservation you have is, is it just redundancy? Interesting mm-hmm. to see what they'll do if Osar is on the board. When we get back, when we shift gears and talk about his brother, uh, Amen Thompson, and whether or not the Spurs should select him, should he be on the NBA draft board right here on Locked On Spurs with Casey. Fiera. Hey, I want to talk to you about game time. You definitely got to get game time right now. You can buy tickets to your favorite events and it won't be stressful at all with game time. Game time is fast and easy. Uh, well, it's just the easiest way to buy tickets for all sports, music, comedy, theater near you with killer deals on last minute tickets and their best price guarantee. You can stop stressing over the tickets and start getting hyped for all the fun you'll have. Flash deals, as mentioned, you get images of the seat, lowest price guaranteed, event cancellation protection, job loss protection. It's just easy to use. Buy tickets for every kind of event in your area. Hey, look, forget planning months in advance. Game time has deals on tickets right up to the day of the event. And it's the fastest growing ticket app in the country for a reason. Game time will credit you 110% of the difference if you find tickets in the same section and row for less at other spots. Again, get images of your seat before you buy so you know exactly what to expect when you arrive. Buy tickets in a matter of seconds. Download the Game Time app, create an account, use the promo code locked on NBA for $20 off your first purchase. Terms apply again, create an account, redeem code locked on NBA. For 20 bucks off. Download Game Time today. Last minute tickets, lower, lowest price guaranteed. I also want to talk to you about the Nissan Aria. Today's Nissan Most Electric Player of the Week is brought to you right here by the all new All Electric 2023 Nissan Aria. Now, I know this is locked on Spurs, but my goodness, if I had to go, I got to give it to Jimmy Butler, the Miami Heat. Did you see what he did versus the Bucks in the previous game? 50 mm-hmm. something yeah. points, Casey. Uh-huh. I oh my goodness. Wow. Uh, arguably already a top five ish postseason performance. Absolutely. Of the past, I was gonna say ever, but there's been a lot of postseason. Right. Um I'm trying to think of a generation and maybe within the past ten years. Yeah, exactly. And, you know, I thought my Probably. eyes were bulging out when I saw Tim Duncan almost get a quad dub in the NBA finals. He was robbed. But my goodness, what 
what Jimmy Butler did is just insane. He is Nissan's most electric player of the week right here on Locked On Spurs. Hey, it's electric, brilliantly fierce, fiercely elegant, subtly powerful, elegantly powerful. Delivers on duality, a combination of fierceness and elegance. Beautiful but strong. The perfect SUV crossover. The 2023 Nissan Ario packs pin to your seat power and premium intelligence all-in-one EV. The EV for people who love to drive. Shop now at NissanUSA.com. All right, uh, Casey, let's go to continue our chat right here on Locked On Spurs. We're talking about the possibility of the Spurs looking into or maybe drafting one of the Thompson twins. Now, we just did Osar. We're going to do Amen Thompson now, his brother, also with Overtime Elite. 6'7", 202 pounds. That's what he's listed at. Let's go at some of his strengths already. High two-point percentage conversion, high assists, high field goals, high steal, high rebounds, high blocks, better assist to turnover ratio, can score more. Weaknesses, turnovers, three-point percentage, and free throws and fouls. So he does tend to get into trouble on the foul situation there quick. Uh you know, I think this is the same situation that we just saw with Osar right now is we're possibly looking at another duplicate of a Vassell Kelton or a Sohan, uh, Casey. Yeah. Uh, for the the early, I think, well, I guess not really early. I was going to say early returns, but it's not really early anymore. It seems yeah. the returns are kind of the cliche yin and the yang is that Asar is a little bit more defensive heavy and Amen is a little bit more offensive heavy if you will and the good thing about where the spurs mm-hmm. are at they need they need both right now right yes they do <laughs> they need both you know they, it's philosophy wise they're never gonna go wrong in theory with a guy who's defensive focused but on the contrary they need about as much help offensively or at least versatility mm-hmm. that they can get with where they're at so you know say all these things prefer one or the other net gain seems to be overall positive from whatever which way that they do it but yeah. from I, I think what would be interesting if they draft a man or really more any offensive minded wing, so to speak, was that is there like a trickle down move? And I'm really mm-hmm. applying one to two people here, really one person. Uh, is there a trickle down move and you see someone like Keldon get moved for another quality asset to build out the roster? You know what I mean? Right, right. I, and, I, go, go ahead. No, no, no. I was going to just interject real fast and say, uh, circling back uh, to this discussion is before we hit record, you know, I had a clarification with Casey, everybody, because when we talked about the topics. I said, oh, we'll talk about Amen, I'm sorry, Amen and, uh, and Asar. And I misunderstood Casey when he said, okay, whichever. But, uh, and I ran around with that. I go, you know what? Maybe that is the situation. It's it's kind of a win-win for the Spurs. If if uh, Amen is off the board and Osar is there, okay, and vice versa. So mm-hmm. I think if they go that route, even though you didn't mean it that way, Casey, but I think you're right. It's whichever. Again, it's yeah. the, 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 the silver lining and needing a whole lot of things, <laughs> right? Needing needing yeah. help in various fronts, being void of talent on various fronts, is that anything, anyone will help in any capacity? Mm-hmm. No, so that might be the case here. Yeah, yeah. I look at some of the numbers for uh, uh, Amen uh, Thompson: sixteen point three points per game. Oh my God, this, this may make you cringe a bit. Twenty three percent from the three line. Oh boy! Yikes! Yikes. 16 games for overtime, 28 minutes a game. So he played a few more minutes than his brother. But 6.2 assists, 6.4 rebounds, a little less steals, 2.4. And then, as I mentioned, uh, free throw percentage, 64%. I think another, whichever they pick, dare I say, Casey, project-ish for both of them. In reality, I think anyone in this draft not named Scoot Henderson or Victor Wambiyama is, is probably true project-ish. Even Brandon Definitely. Miller? I think Brandon, you're probably right. I think Brandon Miller is probably closer to more polished and ready than yeah. the other one. Yeah, but I, 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 yeah. yeah, go ahead. I look at Brandon more of 
just need some sandpapering versus mm. everybody else kind of like, you know what, you may consider G League time. You know, I, I wouldn't right. be surprised if if it's one through three and if it goes the way you're already projecting, four down, might those players may see some G League, unless they just wow in training camp and preseason. But uh, mm -hmm. Yeah, I think that's another reality that Spurs fans have to face is that if they don't win it all or land top three, Spurs may get themselves a project-ish player. Casey, that's something right. else all these Spurs fans are thinking about. You know, this is probably a, a subject matter that we don't have enough time for. I think so. On yeah. This. And, and I think you know yeah. where, where I'm going with this. I know where you're going with this, yeah. Is that if they don't get one or two, do you trade the pick? I don't know. If that's very I'm going to write know. that down. I'm going to write that down. I think that's a, a very, very good topic for another show. But I'm going to tell you right now, quick preview. I think you have to strongly consider it. I think you do too. Yeah, but we'll I definitely table. Too. I know that's yeah. more. I know that tends to be more of an NFL kind of thing. Mm -hmm. Straight out of that spot and accumulate assets, especially when collectively there's a whole lot of project players. I don't mm -hmm. know necessarily necessarily how eager teams would be to move into that four spot. Maybe there's a scenario like, okay, so like say the Spurs end up at four and Brandon Miller is still on the board and the Spurs know that they're not going to take him. Maybe you get a team that's a little bit more higher on him and they're like, mm -hmm. all right, we'll trade up. We'll trade up from seven who even do we know who who's who has number seven I, whoever it is who has seven, yeah whoever right? it is yeah whoever it is who has seven right now we want him we'll give you seven and three first round picks and the spurs are like all right well the guy that we want is is jairus walker and he's going to probably be there at seven or eight so sure yeah go for maybe. it maybe yeah yeah again a good topic for another lockdown spurs but as far as these thompson twins are concerned I, I agree with you, even though you didn't mean it that way. I think it is a whichever pick. Sure, go ahead. You, you know, great. They both address a need. Uh, you know, they, they, they're both young. They both can fit into the timeline of the rebuild. The Spurs are really good at using the G League. Austin Spurs wouldn't be surprised to see either of them there. But if I had to lean, I would still go Osar simply because of the defense. Uh, what, are, what about you? I, I know. I know. It's. it's... I, I'd probably go. I'd probably go off I probably yeah. would. I, I, I feel do. like the, the the defensive thing was is is a more prevalent need right now. I, I mean, Casey, it was bad last year. It was terrible. It was... Didn't they drop one fifty plus on them? Something at one a few, not just one game, but a couple of games. Oh my god! It felt like two fifty. <laughs> Jesus. I, I think oh, I think while yeah. they they do need that you know having more talent talent on the offensive side of the ball is certainly of more benefit than less. No kidding. Mm -hmm. I think defensively they were just that bad last year that mm -hmm. you just you almost have to, I don't want to say have no choice, but really like okay so they don't land the top two. They're not high on Brandon Miller. You mm -hmm. have a lot of real. Crap, I don't want to call them crapshoot, but dice rolls, so to speak, after that, of players who are, you know, you got a chance to be starters in the league. I think you have to prioritize the ones who are more defensive minded first, you know, defense first type of players. I think they have to look that route first. Yeah, I think so too. And in, in you know, all signs are indicating that pop, it will be back. You could tell the defensive side of things really weighed on him more so than anything for obvious reasons. I think. Osar will address that. I think Osar could be what Romeo Langford should have been. And, you know, that young, dynamic, defensive stopper, which you saw Langford definitely do, just wasn't enough because of his injury. And I think Osar will fill that void easily. But, yeah, things are going to get very interesting. The draft lottery is just a few short weeks away. Uh, we'll see what the Spurs land and if fortune smiles on them. Wouldn't it be ironic? If Dallas wins it all, considering they tanked that one game, or Houston gets it because they took a chance right. on Ime and the Boston and then the basketball gods smile on them. Spurs are right. like, 
I don't want to put that in the universe. I retract everything I just said right now. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's really humbling when you realize there is a much better chance that they don't get one than Yama than when they do. Like, significantly better chance. <laughs> the Spurs, the, okay, we know the worst they can do is seven. So right. you just got to get past seven. You and that's it. You know, that's the thing. That's the worst case scenario. I think at seven, can you imagine if they get seven? I mean, that's you're not getting an impact player at all. I don't think you are. Oh, God. impact immediate. Me or, or guys, in, my, in my opinion, there's there's two guys, maybe three that do okay. that. And the oh, obvious the, the, yeah, yeah, you know, yeah, the Wemby Scoot. And depending on how you're feeling, what di- what side of the bed you wake up about Brandon Miller, then those yeah. three. Everybody else, everybody else, it's cliche, but I think the draft really starts at four. Or everyone outside of those three right. guys, probably. So yeah. I'm not like, like, okay, this is probably a little bit of a stretch in me trying to be glass half full in the event that they do get number seven. I don't see a massive difference in landing four and landing seven knowing how the Spurs tend to operate with things and always think to, for better and worse to outside the box about some of these prospects, where they go to, they, I mean, they might value a guy knowing them who's projected to go 11, 12 and sure. take him theoretically at five. Mm-hmm. We saw it last year. I mean, we saw it or- Sohan where, where he did. And some people, some people weren't even sure Sohan was going to be a, a lottery pick. Or, or, or hell, I go back a few more years. I, you mean Primo? Primo, the with this, if the Primo doesn't show, the Primo pick doesn't show just how out there Brandon Wright and the Spurs are willing to take a risk on players, and then I don't know what will convince you of that. So f- don't be surprised if I'm making this up. Spurs are picking at five or four, and it's like, oh, it's obvious. It's one of the Thompson twins, duh, and it's Euro guy or it's. You know, another guy, you know, that wasn't even projected to be in the top 10. I can see them doing that because if they're in a rebuild, then I can, see, and if they're in a deep rebuild. I don't see them coming out of the deep part of the rebuild of the, uh, how about the deep end of the pool, so to speak, mm-hmm. at least for another year. Which again might be more, right. Again, might yeah. be more the reason if you're not, if you're not number three to just trade altogether. And that'll definitely speed things up. He is Casey Vieira with Ken's Five TV Sports Desk side of things. Uh, you know, it's kind of a is, is it a quiet time in San Antonio sports right now? I know the Brahmas are all done already, so that yeah, pretty much. I, I don't even know where to begin with them, but anyway, yeah. It just, was it just that. me that there was no vibe for them? Like I didn't feel San Antonio show out. For them. Well, I mean, this is something that we've talked about before. The schedule makers didn't do them any favors. That's right. That's they didn't right. do yeah, them any favors. That. Like, okay, so they, the first week they were here, the inaugural week, they sold the place out. And then the next two weeks, they have to go on the road, which it, it theoretically is understandable because they have they've forever had the high school championships, basketball championships those two weeks. Okay, fine. But why couldn't they have come back home the third week? Yeah. And that the ensuing week, the fourth week, why are they playing a game at eight at night on a Sunday? You know what I mean? And that takes away the lot. The way the league was constructed, having the players in Dallas not being able to engage with fans, uh, they were doomed. They were doomed. Hopefully not the end. But I digress. Yeah, but there's other San Antonio sports going on. I think uh, San Antonio FCs are underway, right? Uh, what else is cooking over there on your side of things? Yeah, they're good. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, they're good. They're yeah. Good. Simply enough. Simple enough. Follow Casey on Twitter at Casey underscore Vieira. Make sure you do that right now. And we thank you for making Lockdown Spurs your first listen each and every day. So for Casey Vieira, I am Jeff Garcia. We're putting a lock on this episode of Lockdown Spurs. (laughs) 